Hello and good evening. Today is uh, Thursday, March the 14th. We're just going to start the class tonight, this evening. Uh, welcome back. I'm just going to welcome the class here live tonight, and I'm going to hit that. Uh, well, it's already recording, so we're going to continue with the Photoshop segment of the program. Well, this is class uh, number 10, class number nine, week number 10, actually. And we're going to be continuing on with the with, um, Photoshop module. OK, so here we go. I'm going to share my screen. So this is the um, Photoshop module, like I mentioned earlier. Um, we're entering the class number nine uh, Facebook ad territory. So this is also something on the agenda for today. However, there are some lesson files from last week. I can't cover all these in one class. It just doesn't work that way. So I'm going to have to finish what we left off from last week. And this week we're going to start with the MacBook Pro resources. These are just resources I collected to give you an idea how to get this Facebook ad started. Uh, you can pick any theme, by the way. It doesn't have to be uh, MacBook Pro. That was just something we collected back then. Okay. So with before we start that, let's just quickly finish what we recap from last week. If you haven't downloaded already, download these lesson files. And the way that's going to look like it's going to have a folder. Like this the selections folder. Like I said, last week we finished this one here. Right, and today we're going to. Start with this one. Well, like, as I mentioned before, these handouts are really, really um, hands on. Not only I'm going to do the video instructions and demonstration how it's done. You also have like an actual uh, point form handout. I used to print these and give them to my students. If you're the type of person who likes to read and follow instructions, there's your backup copy. So it's a good way to kind of read up on it. And it just covers all the steps that I'm going to be covering in the, in the module. So if it's a little different, it's because I decided to take a different approach to teach you some other uh, similar or related techniques that pertain to the exercise. All right, so um, that's pretty much how that's set up. If you want to join me with this one, Let's, for example, see what this is. So open the file, select the background layer. We're going to do what's called color range, a very nice way to select colors and selections. We're going to um, also edit in quick mask mode, a good way to introduce you how quick mask mode works in Photoshop. It's a powerful technique that most Photoshop designers use. OK, and we're going to use the quick mask mode and all these other steps that I mentioned. OK. So lo and behold, let's go ahead, right click here and open this with Photoshop. Okay. And you'll see a picture of this bike. And we're gonna open both files at the same time. So this one as well. So one and two, two images open. In earlier versions of Photoshop, the environment would look different. These would look like this, a window here and a window here. Those days are gone, more like 10 years ago, right? So, so the way most apps right now, they have a docking system, which means these windows are docked within the application like this and like this. It's important to show you this because if you do have an accident, it could be frustrating trying to figure this out. So the trick is these are tabbed. Why would you want them to be untabbed? Maybe because you're the type you're the type of person that likes to do drag and drop. Because how do you drag and drop this in here? <laughs> you literally have to go drag, go up top, hold the mouse, and drag back down, let go. And if you're not consciously aware of these steps I just just <laughs> mentioned, it's going to be difficult. That's why you want to make sure you understand how to tab and untab these files. So to untab them, you simply have to drag this down like this, and that becomes a floating window. 
And then I could perhaps drag this in here, or I should have got the other one to drag it back and forth. To put it back where it is, you literally have to drag it to the top section. Wait for this blue highlight thing to show up, like you see right now, like a glow. As soon as you let go of the mouse, it taps back. That's an indication of how to control the docking system. And all the apps work like that, especially Adobe. For example, I can grab these color swatches here and pull them out like that. I can same way put them back. Right, so that's how the tab system keeps things organized. I like the organized way. It took me a while to get used to it. I used to get calls from my friends saying, hey, how do you drag and drop? Like, what, what did they do with the program? It's broken. What did they do to it? They opened the program. Nobody liked this when it first came out. Then we realized why. Because there was tablets, smartphones, different dimensions of laptops and screens. So this was more responsive to the way the interface worked, and that's why they did that. All right, so let's get now back to this. We're going to bring this image here into this environment over here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to make a selection. Now, last week we covered all the selection methods. I like that exercise because it covered the lasso, the magnetic lasso. It covered the quick selection tool, the new object selection tool. We also utilize some of the basic techniques with rectangular and marquee selections with elliptical selections, and those are all good. But there's other ways of integrating selections in Photoshop. And that's simply by going to things like you go to the select menu itself. This alone has a lot of advanced methods that you can use. In this case, we're going to explore the option called color range. Color range is very useful with in terms of selecting various colors. If you want to select like a green or red. In this case, I want to select the blue. And the strategy here is to select the blue and inverse selection to the target, which is the bike. So if I go color range, you're going to get this menu that shows up as a separate palette. Okay. And from there, you have the eyedropper by default selected. And if you hold shift, it turns it to like a plus sign. If you hold option, it goes to a minus sign. So that's how you can control to add or subtract selections. And this gives you an actual thumbnail of what the outcome is when you do make a selection. Okay. So basically, if I go ahead and click on this blue over here, Notice how the blue is selected in a white selection with a gradient going to the black. The black is what's not selected. The white is what is selected. You can easily invert these options, or you can actually change it from selection mode to like an image mode. I like the black and white preview because it gives you like a black and white contrast of what's being selected. It's quite evident what's happening. So having this set all that, the trick is to watch this. You click here, this blue here. You hold shift, and you swipe it down this way. And you hold shift again. Keep holding shift. And you go around that way. So think logically. If you're a computer, what's happening? You're selecting different pixels. You're selecting all the blues here. Light blue, the dark blue, light blue, light, light, light. So all this range here going to be selected. All you have to do is hold shift with the mouse and go all the way here. Select color range. Let's try it again. So you click here, you hold shift, drag the mouse all the way across like this. As soon as you let go, what you'll see is the isolated selection of what's left. Great for selecting, let's say, something like red or yellow or something in terms of color selection. Photoshop easily picks up that color. Okay? It's way more advanced than the traditional methods because it does just that. Uh, the other option is now you can select from here. You can do what's called um, invert. Invert means you can do the opposite of what's selected back and forth. Okay, or you can just leave it alone and it's going to be just that. I like to invert it because we want to select this, not that, correct? So that's a strategy of our own right now. So we're going to hit invert. This way it's going to select the bike and the person that's doing the stunt, right? 
And with that, we're going to apply a quick mask and copy and paste these pixels onto the other image. So once we click OK, there's a selection there. You see the selection spot? Now, let's just say you forgot to press that invert button. What do you do now? You can also go to the select menu and invert the selection at any time. So you go to select. Inverse. Inverse does exactly what I just did, but from the menu perspective. So inverse now selected the background. So if I press like delete, let me unlock the layer to show you. It deletes the background. Let me press command Z. If I inverse the other way, it deletes that. Okay, so you have to be consciously aware of what's being selected, what's not being selected. So the intent here is to copy the pixels. I want to copy these pixels and paste them onto the other document. So in that case, I'll press Command or Control C. So copy, go to this document here, and paste the pixels. But before you paste, it should always be in this move tool right here. Now, move tool. Why? Because chances are you want to move the selection or the pixels or wood in a different position. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, take off this transform tool. Do me a favor when you select this this move tool here, right? Take off this show transform controls. So do that by default right now. Make sure the show transform. I don't know why it's on. I know a lot of you installed Photoshop recently. I'm not a big fan of this here. Just turn this off. It's just, I like to call that out when I need to. I don't need this thing to be there. Right? Unwillingly, it's something that you want. So copy, paste. And make sure this show transform controls is off. Okay, it just causes more, more, more problems. With and then you, you might want to, if you do want to transform it, you can just use Control or Command T. And then you can do what's called resize. You can do like a rotate and stuff like that. Because I just find this thing, you know, it just throws itself out. What's on it? I don't know. Your laptop a second. What was the thing is the surface This little button here. Roll over. It's a little test. I don't know what they did with this, but somebody else had the same problem. What version did you install? The latest one. So just say copy. Let's ignore that for now. Just press command C. Go to the other document. Control B. And press E. Control Z. Go back to the other one again. Select inverse. Just, yeah, give the inverse the selection. There wasn't anything. Inverse. You know what? Okay, I think you're done. Okay. Now copy. Copy and paste. If 
But again, press enter. Can you move this around? Press escape. Okay. okay, let's do that. Select inverse. Go to select inverse the menu. Select inverse. Red not cancel. Select in Now hot interest. So I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, just use that. If some of you have this weird thing that shows up, I've seen it last week with someone else. It's around here somewhere. I don't know how to figure this out. Like, I don't know. It's it's a I saw two people with this. It's like a it's a different little stacking icon. I can't figure out why it's there. Um, it's not you, obviously. It's, it's probably the software, the way maybe Windows 11. I don't know. Uh, it could be a Mac PC. It could be something else. The, the rest of you look okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're okay. And she has this. She has a bounding box that we can't. Normally, in my computer, I can auto select. See, in her computer, she doesn't have this option. You can, you can, you just shut this off and on. I can't find that on her. You couldn't even exist. I don't even know how to figure it out. Can you? And your preferences are not changed because you just installed the program. So let's just work around it for now until we figure something. Out. It just looks yeah. weird. <laughs> and that's a Photoshop, right? Not a beta version or nothing. Photoshop. 2024, right? Are you right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Windows, right? Workspace. Windows, right? Workspace. It's on example one. Yeah. Yeah, that may not be that. Yeah. Turn that same off. It's a little hot. Turn it off. I don't like it. You just keep that off. To this thing, yeah, I never seen that. I've never seen that before. That's like just what I Okay, let's just think, uh, for now. I don't like it's one of those things, I guess. Maybe you have a newer version that we don't have. Uh, yeah, I agree. Maybe you have like a newer, newer version. That's why they get angry emails. What they do with this stuff. Okay. So now that we brought it in here, what are some of the other things we can do, right? Well, you can rotate it, scale it, move it, position it, and stuff like that. But is it perfect? Let's zoom in. Let me turn off this show contrast, transport controls. Is it perfect? Is it perfect? What do you think? It's not really perfect, right? Look, you picked up some of the blue, some of the other things, so it's not perfect. Okay. So how do we make it perfect? This was the step that I skipped on purpose to show you the difference. So do me a favor. Delete this layer. Just hit delete. Okay. Go back to the image here. Is it is it still selected? If not, can you do do it again quickly? Select color range. Some of you maybe close it or something back to it. I want you to learn something very important. Press Q on your keyboard. Just Q. Q opens what's called quick mask mode. <laughs> but I prefer to uh, do this relative first. So, so what you want to do is inverse the selection and then press Q. So this is okay, but I prefer so press Q again. So press Q, 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 Q. See, it's like a switch on and off. I'd rather you do select inverse and then press Q. I prefer this. But now you can see the details of what's not selected. And you can perfect the selection using a brush technique. And this is what the experts love to do in Photoshop. So I'm teaching you this right away, because we only have like six weeks for this. 
seven weeks to put final facts. So when you're in this mode, I need you to go to the brush tool. B for brush. Make the brush size nice and small. Small meaning like, I don't know, five pixels. Hardness, 100 or 90. Zoom in. How do you, how else do you control the brush size? Look at my hand. Square bracket, bigger, smaller. Beside the letter P, there's two curly brace brackets, the one used for your JavaScript. Smaller, bigger. But make sure your caps lock is not on. Okay, so you see the round radius. So make the brush small, right? And then you can go like this. You can paint these things in. If you need to. Square brackets. Beside the letter P, left and right. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time controlling this uh, straight line. How do you make a perfect straight line? Show the same. Very good. So if you hold shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, and do that repeatedly. We get all the spokes. Or you might go for the whiskers on the cats. I don't know how definitive you want to get a selection. Here, you know, little details. That's why you come to this mode. Get the details that no other selection option will give you. So this is called perfecting your selection. Just do a little bit. You don't have to do the whole thing. I don't want to spend an hour on this. Okay, let's just spend another two. You know what I mean? You get the idea, right? But just get a few. And of course, there's more on this side and blah, 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 right? So that's good. So now when you're ready and you're happy with your overall addition to your selection using a brush method, now you press Q. Select inverse. Notice how I selected inverse. I'll put it back in the selection. And then you copy and paste into the other document. Figure it out. Did it work? Again, don't get carried away. I'm just you, you get it as long as you understand how it works. There's some tires too, so just go over the tires. Create a tire. Yeah, it's not. It's kind of famous, right? You don't have to do that. You can make the brush bigger for that. But that's okay. Just use the spokes. Get them up some, right? With the spokes, you got a fresh shift. Yeah, so the big brush gets tired. Of it. Bring it back out. Just... Just Right. Yeah, there we go. Right. So I didn't see it like oh, it, was, it was too faded out. Now it's proper, like it's nice and solid, right? That means it's got to become a selection. Something to do with the way you selected it previously, but just be careful because that's how you apply the selection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you make the brush smaller, it's smaller very quick. You could just you could do one click on that spoke over there, click once, yeah. one of them, click once, hold the shift, click on the other end. So we don't really click here and click there to get that line. Get it? You think it's smaller and more intricate. When you do it. It's very tedious, but that's how we do it, right?
Okay, so that one. Let's make a duplicate of the bike. Go to the move tool. Okay. Leave a copy of it. I want you to flip it. Flip it means vertically. So you can go to edit. Watch this. Edit, transform, flip vertical. Look at this. Horizontal means this way, vertical means that way. So when you flip it vertical, it's going to flip the other way. Okay. And press Command T. Command T means like squish it. Right. Once you flip that, okay, did you just push it? Pretend it's going to be a shadow, okay, with a reflection of a shadow. Once you just push it, press enter. Then you can double click here on the right side of it. Be careful, because look, here, not here, put it to the right. And you want to do what's called color overlay. Edit, transform, flip vertical from the menu. Now, when you're here, I mean, there's many ways of doing this, but the quickest way, the fastest way is to open up this layer style menu, which we're going to look at later again. But we're going to apply what's called color overlay. Do me a favor, but don't just click here. Click on this whole tab. Otherwise, you're not going to get the options to change on this side. So click on color overlay. Like that. What do you know? The default color is black. That's exactly what we want. Now it looks like a shadow. And not only that, we're going to press OK. You can control the opacity like this and make it look like a realistic shadow. The opacity, 37%. Want to go a step further? To make it look more natural, this is what's called a Warp transform, which is the last step. So you're going to go to edit, transform, warp. We did this last week with the pepper. Remember the pepper for the nose? The metal that we did? We warped it. So you warp that shadow that we made. And you can do things like this. You can kind of do whatever you want, really.
Okay. Press enter. And I think I'm going to go a little more with the percentage there. 70. Yeah, work that more like natural because the terrain matches the hill or, the, you know, it depends on the terrain. If it's a smooth surface, if it's a bumpy surface, if it's some kind of a regular surface, you match it according to the conditions and the opacity and stuff. Okay. We're taking this too far because this is not on the handouts. This is the extra stuff I like to do. It's not on the written thing. <laughs> I do a little extra just to make teach you more stuff. Okay, one more. Go to filter, blur. Gaussian blur. The Gaussian blur. Filter blur, it blurs the edges. Look at my shadow. Look. See how it's blurry when you go away? Depends on the distance. The shadow is not as clear and crisp. So you can go ahead and do this. Right? I think 1.3 is okay. Default. Because if you zoom in, you see the shadow is blurry. The edges. Okay, so now you can put it away. Save it as a Photoshop file, and this is a good little exercise you can you can reminisce on it. You can call this bike stunt rider or something, or just jump finished underscore finished. You have a separate file from the original. Okay, jump finished. Take. Okay. We'll put that one away. Put this one away. And let's look at the next one. The next one is this one here. Pretty quickly how this works. But we're not going to get into the details because it's a lot of and unnecessary, but it's good for you to understand how this new feature works. Just open it up very quickly. Double click. The picture of these people walking on the beach. Looks like a destination wedding or something like that, right? If you open up the guides to so go to view, uh, show guides, you can also do command apostrophe, semicolon. Get used to the shortcuts because they help. You can see the guides. This layer. And the move tool. Our goal is to crop the image to that area. So if I press Command T and I do this, crop, crop. Is that okay? Because I all got taller, skinnier. What's wrong? <laughs> right? No, it's not up there. Never ever distort images. That's the rule of no no. There's the funny thing. I see this every day. Newspapers, magazines, ads, TV. I see it on my internet. It's just careless. They just what do you gotta do? Fit the picture, right? Make it fit within the 500 pixel width. But that's a no no. So the strategic way of doing this in Photoshop. The way you do it is you go to edit. Ready for this one? Content aware scale. This is a new feature. Came out before chat GPT. It's own AI, Photoshop's AI. This differentiates pixels, understands subjects and people and backgrounds. So when you do select content aware scale, and you do move this in, <laughs> It does this. See?
content, aware, scale. In conjunction with this, sometimes you have to use what's called an alpha channel or save selection, which we haven't done yet. So I'll show you that more on the advanced side. Right now, I just want to make you aware of this file, what it does. So because it's not perfect, look at our hand. Look at our hand. Strap top. So, you know. Let me show you the next example. The next example. If you hide this layer, go the other layer, the new one. Right? Try doing the same thing. Try go to edit. First, look, try doing um, content over scale. Look what happens. Look at this. Is that okay? Why? What happened? Right. This is worse than the first one. I'll watch this. You go to edit. Let me just show you the power of alpha channels. Alpha channels is how you embed selections in Photoshop in the back end to help support areas to not be affected, like basically uh, frozen pixels, we'll call them, right? If you go to layers, channels and paths, this is where Photoshop's brains and functions derive from. So channels is where everything happens. By default, the channel reflects the colors that are embedded with the color profile of the image. In this case, it's RGB, red, green, and blue. If you start doing this kind of stuff, you can see different colors. Not that you want to do this, but it's just to show you how colors are perceived. You don't want to come here and start doing this kind of stuff. Pointless. What you want to do, though, is click on the alpha channel here, scale. This is already pre-made. If you're a designer and you want to do some editing, you can make an alpha channel yourself for the reason that I'm going to show you next, why you want to do it. Because now that we know how the alpha channels work, I'm going to go back to layers and show you how to use that in conjunction with my technique. So if I go to edit, content aware scale, Okay, remember before we did this, we had a nice laugh, right? Get this out of the way. Look at this. Protect scale. Don't think scale is a term. Scale is the name of the output channel I showed you. Just a scale. Let me rename it. Watch. Let me go to channels. See how it says scale here? I'll rename it. I'll call it teens. I'll call it teens. So I'm going to go edit, transform aware, content aware scale, channels. Sorry, protect teens. Teens. What happens when it protects the teens? Look at this. You move it in. Move this in. Look at that. It protects the pixels. Pretty cool, right? That's why you want to know how to do the alpha channels. You can protect areas not to be distorted. You can do all kinds of cropping and scaling and not affecting the main subjects. Oh yeah, look, see, watch, group hug, right? I mean, it can only work so much. Yeah, to the people. 
So it, it goes up to where the subjects meet. Like I would go as far as maybe that. Of course, everything has limits, right? You, do you want to go home? Go what? Like, because you, you're coughing nonstop. I'm trying not to be near because I have an elderly person at home too. I'm recording this. I'm just saying, I'm not, you know, putting in a bad spot or whatever. If you're not feeling well, you know what I mean? No. So that's how you protect the alpha channels with 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 selection. Now you're gonna ask me, well, how did you make an alpha channel? Right? Well, let me show you, because look. I'll demonstrate the same thing. Remember the arm? The arm got twisted. Let me show you how to do it now from the creative perspective. So I can do it on this because everything else was okay except the arm. So here's how you do it. You zoom in, you select a layer, you zoom into the area that's effect. Oh, you can just alpha channel everything. But in this case, I'm going to use the Remember the lasso, the lasso tool? I'm going to just do a basic select. Look at this, basic selection, like that. I just selected this area. So that's the area that I noticed there was a problem. With. Once I select that area, I'm going to go select. You, you with me? So I selected the area that, that caused the problem. Select, save selection. Okay, I'll call it arm, right? Or hand, arm, whatever. New channel. This is how you make an alpha channel. The selection and you save the selection. Every time you save a selection, it becomes an alpha channel. An alpha channel is an advanced form of Photoshop utilizing selections as saved elements to be used in many, many scenarios. You can take the alpha channel into a video editing software like Adobe Premiere and do like a background effect, like the Marvel movies, green screen. I saw Dune 2 yesterday. Good movie, eh? Have you guys seen Dune 2? Great, great sci-fi film. The first one was a little bit of a score fest, but the second one was good, huh? You don't like the second one? Did you see it? It got like 9.5 on IMDb. Everyone rated it like really high. And I'm not a big Doom fan either. The first one had a lot of, a lot of build up, but no action. It was okay though. I mean, maybe you like different parts of it too. Yeah. But it was an overall thing they did good. And there's the third one coming up. Yeah. Okay. So here's my selection channel, new, okay, right? Now watch this. When I go to channels, teens, oh, let me just see. Arm. I saved the selection. I call it arm. You can do multiple, so that you can do as many as you want. You can do like 10 saved selections, and you can call them out at any given time. So I just did another one in the same document. I made two alpha channels. So now that we know how this stuff works, we go to edit, um, content aware scale. Protect arm, protect the arm. So when I do this now, when I do this now, right? Looks like there's a tsunami in the background. Look at arm, problem, protect it. I selected, I went to the side, it's okay. I didn't go close to the arm. I mean, you can if you want. I mean, ideally, I would select all the people and then protect them just in case you don't know what's going to happen. So protect all the areas you want to freeze. Oh, but look, look, I should have done this too. <laughs> There's a little more, more, but that's okay. We get the idea, right? This is just something I wanted to show you, not something that you want to maybe use today. 
But in the future, you might want to know how to use alpha channels to protect pixels for whatever reason. Okay, so let's put this one away. Close. You can save it if you want. Save, select, save selection. Select is how you save the selections. You can also load selections. But look, let me show you one more thing since this is, you ready for this? Let's say I want to extract these teenagers to another area. And I don't have a selection. Because Alpha Channels has it saved. Like, let's say I did this and I saved the selection. It's always there. I can always go select, load selection. Look at this. Teens. There's the selection. So once you save a selection, you can load the selection. And you can just copy, paste, do whatever you want. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on this, but you, you get my idea, right? You can load the selections at any time. So just saving the selections keeps this in alpha channel mode in the background. Okay. Now it's your turn. Your job is to put this thing back together. TSI Toronto sound. All the stuff you learned from last week and today, you're going to use the techniques to put this back together. I'll walk you through it. I'll, I'll, do, it. I'll do like maybe two pieces and then you can do the other three. So basically here. Um, Open it up in Photoshop, double click. Let's say you ripped up something by accident. I'm sure you've done it. And you're like, oh, shoot, how do I bring it back? Right? Or let's say a photo is ripped or something, right? Like crime investigation or whatever. Well, you can scan the pieces on a scanner, take a picture. Bring it to the computer and put it back together. That can be done. Very useful skill to have. With great skill comes great responsibility. <laughs> so don't do anything malicious, okay? <laughs> do good things with it. All right, so zoom in. Let's attack one piece at a time. That piece right there, we can select it with any selection tool. I'm not going to use the lasso. It's too freehand. But I could use the magnetic lasso. Right? Magnetic. Let's try it out. I click here. I follow the mouse along. I click periodically. Keep clicking. Look, it, it sticks. It's nice. It knows exactly the edges that I'm looking for. You can click periodically back and forth. There. Okay, you connect where you start. And then when you're done, you press Q for quick mask mode. And you can see what you can fix. If I zoom in, I can see, you know what? I missed this little piece here. So I'm going to go with the brush tool, zoom right in, and fix it. But not with the black, with the white. So you press X and you switch to white to be on the foreground color. And you simply go ahead and Take this red stuff out because that's the mask. Because you want to get as much as you can. So your masking is your fixer upper. Okay. You fix it with the mask. And when you're done, you press Q. And there's a select. So what? Q, Q, selection. Right? And when you're ready, copy and paste. So we're going to do Command J or copy and paste. And we're going to go ahead and hide this like this. Look. Okay. 
and just go with the move tool and move it around. So you know it's a separate piece. Rename it, call it top, top left, top left corner, right? And hide it. Next is this piece here. I want you to practice as many techniques as possible. This time I'll use the quick selection tool. This one's a good one, eh? This one here. It's up to you what method you want to use. I just want to make sure you're able to deliver on all kinds of methods available. So for this one, look, look how easy this one is. You click and drag the mouse like this, click and drag, click and drag. Oh, I got extra there. So I'm going to hold option, click. Right? Press Q, 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 right? Clean it up with the brush. Press Q again. Copy and paste, Command J. Go to the Move tool, move it up there. So basically, I have these two pieces ready to assemble. You can press Command T on each one. You can kind of straighten this one out. Click on this one. Can I show you something cool though? What? Watch here, everyone. Look how I'm gonna roll. I'm not gonna. I can rotate it this way. I can rotate it this way. I can also do this. I can put a, a swivel there. So I press Command T. You see this registration? I move it right there where they meet, right? I leave it there and I go to the edge and I rotate it perfectly that way. You see that one? So you can kind of control, it's called the registration. A good little method to control your rotation, transform and all that. You press enter and there it is. Again, I just use two methods, magnetic and quick. I use the other method, the one that the new one that came out, which is quite easy. This other method, it's the um, object selection tool. Remember that one? You just hover the mouse, you wait, you count to one, two, three, four. It's taking too long. Maybe it's too overwhelming for it. <laughs> All right, never mind. Let's just use the quick selection tool. Quick selection tool. Click and drag the mouse. Click and drag the mouse. Right. Press Q to confirm. Right. Get the spots that you don't want to get or whatever, vice versa. Right. When you're happy with it, copy, paste. Okay, Command J. Hide the background. Look at this one. I'm going to move it here. And when I swivel it, I'm going to move this in this corner here. So when I rotate it, it's going to go like this. Nice and easy. I think I messed up on one of them, but that's okay. I deleted the inside. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do it again with this one here. Let me do uh, this one here, the bottom one. I'm repeating the steps, okay? I'm repeating myself over and over again. So watch again. Let's do this bottom, bottom middle piece. Quick selection tool. Click, drag the mouse, right? Press Q. Investigate, investigate. Looks good, okay? Now we press Command J or copy and paste. Copy, paste. Then I go like this. I show the other layers. I go to the move tool, I move it here, right? Right in the corner, or I can align it with the other corner, whatever. Doesn't matter. Let's let's say I want to align it with that corner right there. I press Command T or Control T. And the trick is to move the, the registration here. Because I want to be able to move it like this. I don't want it in the middle. I want it right there. So I'm going to move this over here. Drag it like this. Drag it over here. Now I can go ahead and go to the opposite corner and just move it up the way it's supposed to be. And then press enter. And that becomes my other piece. I got one to go. Okay. And then the prime is solved. Have the full investigation in order, the photo restored, 
Mission accomplished. Okay, so we go up in the background there. Wow. So make sure, make sure you click on this little box over there. <laughs> make sure you're in the move tool, right? Let me do it on this one again. Look, one more time. Ready? I'll select the bottom piece, right? Q. Oops. Q, right? Good. OK. Command J or copy and paste. If you're not getting this little transform thing, when you press Command T, make sure you turn on this little check mark. Look, see my mouse, everybody look here. This has to be on. Otherwise, you won't see the registration point. When you press Command T in the move tool, check that thing on, toggle on. It's a little check mark. See it? Because if it's off, you won't see the registration. If it's on, you can see the registration. I'm going to move the registration here in the corner here and just move this up like this. Well, this is a weird one, eh? So I have to maybe do it manually. That's okay. I'll do it like this. When it's all said and done, you have the completed version. It's not perfect, but I've had students that just went the whole way and they. The quality more kind of stuff like this. This will be right? Yeah, you can. You gotta have a steady time. It's not. That's why it's not the favorite one. If you have a simple area, you can do it, but I prefer the quick set. You can kind of go back, but, but that's why when you're done, press Q and erase. You can all, you fix it after. Yeah, it's it's easy fix, right? Easy fix. Very nice. Okay. 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 You can double click on this color. Double click here. See it. Right. So you make a selection. Copy paste. We already have this. Yeah. Let's press it. Go to the move tool. Copy paste or control J. Right. Then go back to the move. Click name T. You can rotate. Right. Right, so then you do the next piece of cut and paste. Right. It's part of another piece with the selection. Right. Okay. 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 Look, this is recorded, right? So if you didn't get it, don't worry, you can watch it again later and try it. But if you I do want you to attempt to see this one, okay? It's a good little, you know, the good thing to know how to do. But that's what Photoshop people use it for many things. So restoring photos is a very important thing too. Okay, let's keep going. Let's save this as 
porn underscore finished. And I'll just put it away. So before, after, right? You just like all these skills you're gonna learn in Photoshop. You can do so many cool things. Now you got the AI with your Photoshop skills, untouchable. Okay, <laughs> there's nothing you can, you can grab images from anything, paste, copy, paste, put together. There's nothing you can't do. It's like a it's like a pixel pr playground, right? As long as you know how to use it properly and use the tools, you know you're not gonna be held up with with any questions and stuff and obstacles. All right, so now let's talk about the assignment. Your assignment is a Facebook ad you have to produce. This is your first assignment for this class. Next week, I'll introduce to you the big project, which is the website. You have another assignment later, but that's later on. So the Facebook ad, we're going to utilize it using these MacBook Pro resources. We'll get some new resources. These are old, I think, probably like a year or two. But let's click on it anyways. And you'll get like a folder with a bunch of images. So if you download this to your desktop, just quickly check it out. Once you download it, like to see all your assignments, just click on your uh, grade book, right? And click on your project, Facebook ad assignment. Click on that, and you should be able to see the details of the assignment. You can see like, uh, This is due next week, okay? Next week is the 21st. I'll probably give you an extension. So after next week, I'll give you an extra like couple of days till the end of the weekend. So don't worry, but try to get it done if you can, okay? That's why I'll give you some time today. When I'm done the class, you can start it. I'm gonna help you start this right now. So if you have a week to get it going and it's not hard to do. It'll take you honestly an hour, two hours max. You're just putting a bunch of images together with text and creating a Facebook ad. People make a living doing this. Look at how big the market is. Facebook advertising, right? Every company needs ads and not just for Facebook, for LinkedIn, for all the other social media channels. Then you're gonna learn how to do video animation. All these stuff, is it called considered production techniques? That's what this class is. But you're doing creative production techniques, not just being a you know, cut and paste kind of uh, technique here. You can also create stuff because you have the, ways to come up with your own ideas. So let's go through it quickly, okay? So you're gonna be designing a social media ad that will be featured in Facebook and Instagram. So I put both together. A lot of businesses take on these channels to boost their brand and product awareness. You don't have to be an expert to start advertising on Facebook. More than 2 billion people use Facebook every month. So no matter what kind of audience you want to reach, you'll find them here. You will choose your own client, fictional or real. So pick any clients. You can do your favorite running shoes, sneakers. You can do your favorite video game or favorite movie or something. You do a Facebook ad on that. So I want you to have some fun, learn the tools. You're going to create an ad using the tools in Photoshop with the proper size requirements. The size requirements are, what are the size requirements? Oh, 1080 by 1080 pixels at 72 DPI and RGB color mode. That's the size that currently runs on social media. It's a block, it's a rectangle. Used to be 1200 by 630. Those were like landscapes. Now it's like a square. These TikTok and all the other ones kind of have similar formats. Even if it's not, it'll still load. But you don't want to make it 2000 pixels or 4000 pixels because it'll be too big. And they'll tell you, look, this, is, this won't meet the requirements. You can't do it. So that's where you want to meet the requirements from the start. So this way you have no problems uploading stuff on social media. It's different than putting stuff on your phone. This is this is a digital creation on a computer. You have to make sure it's properly targeted. JPEG format, you can use Photoshop and choose your objectives like to audience. So tell me a bit what you're doing. When you submit the project, there's a little content area you can start typing. So tell me something. Hey, I'm doing a Nike ad. I love these new sne uh, sneakers they're having. It's like golf shoes. And this is why I chose Nike. That's my favorite company. Tell me. 
and then send the ad. So that's what that this all means. OK, what am I expecting? I'm expecting minimum of five layers. The thing that we just did with the person skateboarding had five layers. It's not much. Various selection methods demonstrated. That's a given. You can't do it without selection, so I want to see you utilize selection methods. Layer blends and layer styles are optional. I haven't showed you that yet. I'll show you how to use layer blends and layer styles. Actually, we did a layer style earlier. Remember the black shadow for the motorcycle? That was layer styles. So we actually did it, but I'll show you another example. Photoshop format with the JPEG. Why do I want you to do both? Photoshop is your work file. You got to have it in order for you to keep editing your work and make, make templates for other ads. If you do an ad campaign, you know what people do? They make one ad and they replicate it, change it, replicate it, change it. Now you have three ads. It's called an ad campaign. But you're going to make a JPEG out of that because Facebook's not going to accept Photoshop. They don't like each other. Like, I don't want Photoshop on my social media. They say, where's the JPEG? Where's the PNG? You have to produce a JPEG to upload it on social media. So I want you to do a PSD and a JPEG for that reason. And finally, submit it on Blackboard. And your rubric, I think it's like 10% overall. So that's your breakdown. We always do three things, criteria, technical, and creative. And out of that, we weigh it out based on what it is. And your goal is to get 80 and higher. Okay. If you're getting 80 and higher, you're good. If you're getting 70, you got to improve your skill set. Okay. All right. Um, any questions? You want to do a Facebook ad now? Let's get started. So let's go to Photoshop. Let's create a new document. File new. And there's no social media category, although they have photo, print, art, web, mobile. Web is the closest one. From web, you're going to customize the size here. Make sure it's pixels. 1080 by 1080. No artboard. Please take out the artboard. We'll use the artboard next time for multiple placements and stuff. For now, no artboard. Just keep it simple. Sometimes it adds more headaches than you need. 1080 pixels by 1080. Pixels, please make sure it's not pixeled in, instead of inches, because that'll be a problem, right? RGB color mode. So once you go to web, all this is configured for you. You just have to hit the numbers, 1080, 1080, hit the create button, and there it goes. If you're not sure what size the social media things are, just type in Facebook size. Oh, look at that. That's the old one, 1200 by 630, right? Um, but the new one, honestly, really, let's, let's put 2024. But they went back to the old one. It used to be, they changed it from that one I know, but honestly, usually this one, so 1080, 1080 is what shows up. So tell you what, if you want to do one or the other, that's fine with me. I, I just, I used to go with that one before. I purposely changed it to this one because uh, people usually put Facebook and Instagram, they marry them together because it's the same account. So let's do 1080 by 1080. All right, so that means in here, we have a 1080, 1080 document. What's our theme? What do you guys want to do an ad about? Well, here I already have downloaded something. The MacBook Pro resources. The problem is this is an old MacBook Pro ad. Let's get some new sources. So you can go ahead and download some stuff now. Like, look at this. That's a MacBook Pro computer. That's the inside. This, this is the new touch bar, which they got rid of right now. And this is the new speakers and stuff. So it's just a bunch of pictures, really. But if I want to go to the Apple's website, I can get some really nice images right now if you want to do that or go to another source. So let's go to apple.com. Okay, let's get some images that are 
kind of nicer for us to use. Let's go to the, um, you want to maybe promote the iPad, you want to promote the, um, the iPhone or whatever. Did I tell you what happened the other day for me? I got an email saying, you got a free iPad. So I'm like, okay, whatever, it's a scam, right? But I was passing by Yorkdale Mall. So I said, you know what? I'm here anyways, try it out. So I went up to the, the guys, I said, listen, this is what I got. I was being very honest. I said, I don't know if it's a scam or not. They asked me if I bought stuff there before. I have, I spent thousands of dollars. I, I bought this computer. I spent $4,000 of this computer there like four years ago. So I do have a record of buying stuff there. So they say, okay, let's try it out. They scan my code. I got a free iPad. <laughs> I got a free $1,800 iPad. So yeah, York them all. Just go to there and get an iPad. So I, I, I don't know what the heck. So I'm like, so I checked this email and it was from me to me. It was really weird. Like I sent myself a gift. It says from love to Milo or whatever. I was like, okay, I love myself. That's great. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't buy myself gifts, but that was kind of cool. So I'm just saying, next time you get a gift like that, you never know. It might be legit. Because I said, are you sure? Right? Because I don't want to walk out of there with handcuffs, right? <laughs> Go to Yorkdale Mall. So it was, it was legit. We got a free iPad. So it worked out well. Anyways, back to this Apple thing. Go to the Mac. Uh, then I checked later the price of the iPad. It's the iPad, not Pro, was the other one. It was like eight, nine hundred dollars, but still, eight, eight, nine hundred dollars is a nice gift I can I can accept for myself. So MacBook Pro. This is the new stuff they have. This is the new. Now I got the M3 processor, right? So may want to maybe do a screen capture of these things. Save image as, I don't know, let's try it. Mac Pro. I wonder what it's gonna look like, because it did save a rotationary image. Look, it actually did it. It saved that exact angle of me capturing that picture. Now, if you wanna get your image sources, whatever it is, grab them anyhow you see fit. You wanna screen capture, you want to save the pictures like I just caught this on a 3D rotated angle and I can maybe even grab this angle too. Oops. This doesn't stay. Right click, save image as, right download to. Let's grab some more sources here. I want to perhaps grab the new I mean, honestly, I can type in M3 processor under images. And right, there's the M3 chip, okay? That's the newest, hottest thing right now on the market. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, right click, save image as, I'll call it the M3 feature black. Look, this is a nicer too. Look at this one, right? Maybe I can use this one as a background of some kind. Oh, this is the Max. This is the latest one. Right? So you can collect your sources on the internet, whatever websites you have to use, I don't really, doesn't matter. Uh, some people say you have to cite them. You know what? You're having fun with this. You're not doing a prof if you're doing a professional ad, your images will be supplied to you. You're gonna have to maybe ask for permission. You're gonna have to get some proper copyright stuff. Okay, we're not really doing this for a real client. It's it's an exercise. So I don't care if you have some fun, get some images, whatever. Have some fun with it. Okay, but in reality, this is how the game works, right? You get all your stuff given to you or you get a professional photographer, you do your own pictures, that kind of stuff, of course. You can use Unsplash, Pexels, Pixabay, some great image sources for high quality images. Okay, they help you as well. Google's not the greatest for images now. You can also generate AI stuff these days. Anyways, I got four new pictures. I wasn't happy with the old ones. I'll make an ad out of these. 
Oh, I'm missing the key ingredient, the Apple logo. I think it's important to put the brand in there. Well, we do have the M3, so maybe this can act like that. So whatever, I can use either or. So let's go ahead and make the ad now. Here's my document. Let's start placing images. So you set up, you set up your size first, and then you go to file, place embedded. I'm going to stick with embedded for now because link will rely on linked sources, which will give you problem later. Not unless you know how to use the program letter, uh, later on, as I'm going to show you how you can control external linked sources with other, so other software. But for now, we're just going to stick with embedded because it's worry-free, hassle-free. As a matter of fact, it used to be the only place embedded back a few years ago. But recently, they just applied linked. So just stick with embedded for now. Embedded. Desktop. I'm going to grab this image here. Press enter. Get rid of the, get rid of the get rid of the background. So I have this nice image floating by itself. I'll even use the I uh, the magic wand. Watch this. You see this white stuff here. I'm going to select it, delete it. Oops. Okay. If it doesn't delete because you place the image to delete pixels, you have to do what's called rasterize layer. If you don't rasterize the layer. You can't really edit the pixels on the layer. So rasterize the layer and then press delete. And now you have a nice free floating layer that I can use as my design. Let's get one more. File. Oh, can you drag and drop? Can I do this? Sure. That works too. Drag and drop. Okay. So right click, right click, and then you hit rasterize layer down here on the bottom. You got it? But but maybe it's already rasterized. I'm sorry, rasterized. And if it's already rasterized, there's no need to rasterize it. How do you know? How do you differentiate what's rasterized, what's not rasterized? Because if it's not rasterized, it's considered smart object. A smart object looks like this. If it's rasterized, it looks like that. You see the little thumbnail? That's an indication of it being rasterized or not. Okay. What's this now? Oh, this is the other layer. Okay, cool. Maybe a little too much, eh? But look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this up here, move this down here, okay? And I'm gonna grab this and make this part of the screen. So this will be, it'll look like it's part of the screen on the monitor. How would I do that? So watch this. I'm gonna align it here like this. And this is cool because a lot of people that do advertising on billboards, screens, they do this. I do that on my screens too, actually. So I'll go to edit. Watch this carefully. Transform, distort. Okay, the biggest kept secret in Photoshop for doing superimposing. Because if you do distort, you can grab this corner, match it to that corner, grab this corner, match it to that corner, and this corner, and this corner, and make this look like it's part of the screen. You follow me? Press enter. Now it looks like it's part of that monitor right there. I don't know if it looks good. If it doesn't, we can switch it up. But that's, you know, pretty much how we can utilize these techniques. Maybe I'll do like a clipping of some kind. All right. Let's grab this other M3 file. Oh, okay. Press enter. Move that to the very back, right? Or maybe use these somehow to perhaps, look at this now, I have too many layers, right? So see these two layers, I can merge them or I can link them. 
why don't I just merge them? But you might want to show me your work. So you can also do a right click. Um, link layers. Link layers means like join them. So if you move, uh, if I move one, it moves together because it's linked. And then I can hit Command T and do this. I make this part of my linked layer image. And I can grab this layer and do like the same thing, right? That I'm using with. I want to put the website or something, some kind of promotional, promotional catch tag, call to action, whatever you want to put in there to bring up the attention of users to come and check out the website. Uh, you know, maybe I'll go to like Apple. I'll just click on um, the the type tool here. You got to put typography because without typography, sometimes the ad doesn't work. It needs a tagline or a message. So perhaps we can use um, the type tool. Here's the T for type. What you do is you click once and you type whatever you want. www.apple.com. Okay. Or maybe we're using um, slash M M3 or something like that, right? I'm totally making this up, but let's just say I'm sure they have an M3 thing. And I can center this or put it to the corner, left side. Command T again. You can also transform this for text. You can move things right in the center. Okay. And A, center, deselect. Oh, let me show you how layer blends work. Remember layer blends? Like some of the criteria points. You see this laptop here? How it's showing up. What if I move that up like this, made it a little bigger, right? Look at this, everyone. By default, every layer is set to normal. But if you try it with different blend modes, you can have different blend mode effects. Some look weird, some look cool, depending on the images that you're mixing them with. It's all about colors and blends. Next week, we'll cover this a little more to show you a different um, perspective on how these layer blends work. For now, I'm gonna go with maybe, what do you think, this one? Sure, let's go with screen. So it's got a nice little screen effect of the effect. I can do it on this, but it might be too much. I'll leave this one vivid. This one will be nice and, oh look, I'll do this maybe. It'll be transparent. Maybe the logo gets cut off and move it here purposely. Right? M3. And you know, sooner or later, I'll spend another half an hour on this. I'll make it an ad, right? And I'm done, right? You have, you have a week and a half for this to do. Have some fun, get your sources, put it together like this. When you're done, you save it as a Photoshop file. So save as MacBook Pro M. Three adverts. Always put your name in the file so I know it's your project on the computer. Save. You always save the Photoshop file first. And when you're finished, you save a JPEG because Facebook won't accept Photoshop, but it'll accept the JPEG any day of the week. So you're going to go to File, save a copy, and from there you select JPEG. Right? And the quality usually stick to the high quality. So JPEG, maximum quality, 12. So there's uh, the two files, and you submit them both on Blackboard. And again, next week we'll have another class, so I will talk, cut, um, cover some more blend modes in depth. In depth, and at the end of the day, you know, you might produce an ad like this. I just decided to switch my resources last minute. Um, I I should just update them the new ones now because, you know, last year we did this. I used this 
image here. I use this image. I use this image, right? So this time I used not I also want to show you how to collect information, how to save it and how to bring it in, which is what I did. Okay. So did we cover all these? Let's do a check mark list. Uh, yes, we chose the objective. We did a MacBook Pro M3 processor, new Apple promotion. We, uh, we used Photoshop. We saved the JPEG output. We made 1,080, 1,080 pixels. We used five layers minimum. We used various selection methods, uh, layer blends and layer styles, and we saved the Photoshop file, and we're going to submit it on Blackboard. Okay. All right, so that's a wrap. Okay, and I'll give you the rest of the period now to work or do whatever you have to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, go to my because this is recorded. So if you want to watch the lesson again, let's say you missed a few steps before. You can watch my video. I'm going to upload it on YouTube and you guys can watch it again. So having said all that, I hope you guys enjoyed the class. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to just open my file here.